Do who am I making concern at the ATF? guys welcome back to mid-tier thoughts today we're gonna to be talking about cheap guns so times are tough biden economy's ass gas is almost four dollars a gallon most of us are struggling to pay our bills so you're out there you're looking for guns you're like damn i don't got a lot of money but i want to get some good stuff so we're going to kind of go down each category of firearms i think most people should try to own if possible kind of show you some cheap options or representative of those cheap options to see what's out there see what's available and uh see what you like all right so we're gonna kind of look at this a couple different ways. We're gonna look at a few categories real quick, one gun of each category that I've kind of selected to be representative of some stuff and just give you some ideas of things that are out there. So we're gonna talk real quick about 22s, shotguns, pistols, and if possible, that you can afford it, tactical rifles. So we're gonna go through each of these, kind of give you a little pros and cons again, like how much roughly we're looking at for something like this and what you can do to get into this. So we're gonna start with the pistol, right? I think if you're looking for your first gun, uh, you're trying to figure out what to buy, rifle, shotgun, pistol, whatever. I think you should buy a pistol. It's the most versatile of all the options. You get a good holster like this, something like this. This is my Gen 3 Glock 17. I got this on a police trade-in. This was around $300. That's pretty common for police trade-in Glocks, between three to 350 Sometimes even cheaper at pawn shops. There's used guns, things like that, especially a little bit older generations. Um, as far as it being an older generation, it still works fantastically. These things are... Uh, especially police trade-ins, very lightly used for the most time. Generally shot for a qualification course, and then, um, you know, usually shoot once or twice a year, maybe 50 to 100 rounds a year, and then they just sit in the holsters. So you have some holster wear, but outside of that, I mean, this thing works fantastic. Uh, it does have Glock night sights on here as well. You can mount a flashlight on this thing if you want. You've got 17 round mags. Generally, when you buy these, they usually come with three. You know, you get a good holster. This is a works holster, W-E-R-K-Z. I bought years ago, this thing's like 40 bucks. Uh, that's a good way to get set up. Even if you get, can't necessarily do a uh, concealed carry uh, with you know with this, maybe you do your body type. I know I'm a bigger dude, I can definitely carry a 17, but even if you don't have an inside the waistband carry holster, you just have something like this, kind of hangs tight to the body. You can use this as a nightstand gun, a truck gun, carry gun. So definitely I think a, a pistol is the first, is the best way to go out with that. So again, uh, look for police trade-ins. Glocks, Smith & Wessons, things like that. Uh, we're going to shoot these in here a little bit, kind of show you how, how everything works and reliability. Going to go over that in a little bit more in depth later. But the first one I think you should all definitely get is the pistol. <clears throat> here with my uh, Glock problem solver. Uh, that was cheesy. Uh, yeah. So Glock 17, Gen 3, 17 round mags. So one thing I will say to you, uh, I, I have found about shooting this is since they are on generation five now, the generation five magazines uh, don't always lock open on the last round with some of these. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's just something with the follower, but outside of just not locking open in the end, that's the only issue I've ever had with these. Other than that, as far as feeding and reliability, no problem. So magazines, I wouldn't worry about too much about if all you can find is gen five, but it doesn't do it every time. It just uh, every so often. So. We're gonna see if it does it on this one. We're gonna fire uh, two mags and kind of show you guys, make sure it works, show you the reliability. And again, uh, there shouldn't be anything wrong with this, even though it's a police trade-in. Very light round count on here. Let's go. <laughs> Maybe we will. All right. So, two mags, no problems. Like I said, light round count on these guys, pretty hard to mess up. Also, if you can Take a part of Glock faster than an ATF agent. Go buy yourself a beer. Moving up from the pistol, um, the other one, again, is we're talking about versatility, and especially if you saw my shotgun video I put out earlier, that'll be floating around somewhere over here probably. 
we've got a single shot shotgun. Now this guy happens to be in 410. Uh, they make these in uh, 410, 12, 20, and as one of my commenters wanted me to make sure I mentioned this time, 16 gauge. Good luck finding ammo. But <laughs> uh, yeah, they make these in a variety of calibers. You can get inserts and run a bunch of different calibers in here. You can do a lot with these. Now you are limited obviously in your ammo capacity. You are limited to one round, but you have a wide variety of ammunition, a wide variety of things you can do with this. You could hunt with this. You could, in a pinch, use it as a defensive weapon. Uh, you can target shoot and have fun with it. You can do a lot of things with this. All right, guys, so now we're transitioning to the shotgun. This, again, is my H&R 410. It's kind of representative of the single-shot shotguns. Or, as I've learned from my British viewers, these are called garden guns in their country. One of the few things they can actually own. So have fun showing IDs by Bob Pocket Knives over there if you can still do that. Anyway, that's why we won the revolution. Uh, so it go, <laughs> moving forward from there, uh, they're gonna be mad. So moving forward from there, again, we're gonna kind of go through this real quick. Uh, if you saw my shotgun video, this is gonna be a little bit of a repeat, but for those who didn't, we've got some Winchester Super X, kind of show the variety of loads we can do here. And actually, you know what? Let's go test, see what these things do to a target. Let's shoot that again. So I know it's gonna be a little hard to see since we got a bunch of nine millimeter holes in here, but I'm gonna to shoot towards the bottom right of this and we're gonna see what this does. So if we uh, move forward real quick, that's the Winchester Super X. You can see this is kind of more of a bird shot. Definitely a good little spread on there. I wouldn't wanna get hit with it either way, but for fun, for going out and shooting, get nice and cheap, you can shoot that. This is a uh, Remington Max it's a six shot. This is like a pheasant load. And then before we go up there, we're going to hit it again. The Hornady Critical Defense, kind of a home defense load. Damn. So, this is that Winchester Super X. This is that other bird shot that we had, a little bit heavier bird shot. These rounds here, kind of hard to see, that's the home defense stuff, tore through here. So the home defense deal is basically three pellets, kind of like hockey pucks, uh, and in space in between them is a little bit bigger than bird shot, a little bit smaller than like number six or something like that, just flying through there with it. It's like to get hit by something like that. So again, in a pinch, you could use this for home defense, would not be my first option because you are limited to one shot reloading. You got to get good at it, but uh, you could potentially, like I said, if your life depended on it, it's better than a poke in the eye. So, moving on from there, one of the other things I think a lot of people should have, I think most people who are gun owners generally have one, is a 22. So, this here happens to be my Ruger 1022 with a 25 round mags. Clear. This one is a Ruger takedown model. So the cool thing about this one is, you pull this to the rear and you lock it back. You push this button up here, rotates out, and it's a takedown model. You can store it in a bag, put it in a backpack, you know, store it at home, whatever you got to do. Nice and easy. Now, a lot of times, you'll have nice iron sights on here. You can also get a rail. However, if you want to run different uh, optics, whether you want to run a red dot or a scope or something like that, you can run something on there. You, this is really fun for target shooting. You can get a lot of practice in for very, very cheap. 22 is still inexpensive. And you can also teach your kids, your wife, new shooters how to shoot. You get a lot of time behind this uh, for not a whole lot of money, especially if your whole point of this is a cheap gun and you're tight on cash. You can get one of these for cheap, you can get the ammo for cheap, you can get the mags for cheap, and you can have a good time. Magazines generally come in 10, and, uh, 10, 15, and 25 round varieties. There are some out there that are different capacities, but those are the, generally the stock ones that you come out with. And uh, like I said, a lot, a lot of fun for plinking. You could potentially hunt small game with this, and in a pinch, I'm not gonna recommend it for home defense, but if it's the only thing you have, it's better than nothing. So, Again, we're now looking at the Ruger 1022 takedown. So with this, the nice thing about it, like we talked about before, it's nice, short, and compact. Um, 22, super cheap. The downside and the biggest reason why I do not recommend it for home defense, 22 ammunition, just be like the way it's made and the way it operates is not the most reliable. And I know there's somebody in the comment section right now being like, well, 22 has killed more people than blah, 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 whatever. That's FUD lore, stop it. Secondly, 
Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and have some fun with this. Uh, for all my AK guys out there, exactly what I'm talking about. Let's try another mag. Could have just been that round. The rest of it worked pretty fine. So you can see there's like almost no recoil from this thing and outside of the very beginning ammo reliability was fairly decent again it's going to just depend on the ammo itself the 22s tend to be pretty ammo picky um, but after that first couple rounds we had no problem so like i said in a self-defense situation i wouldn't necessarily use that if i absolutely had to i would uh, if i had any other option that's what i would use but we got all our rounds on target we fired 50 rounds out of this thing cost us nothing and uh dirt cheap and i know we're sitting here being like you know we're talking about cheap guns cheap is subjective to everybody so we're coming down here and we're looking at my ar-15 now i know you guys are gonna be like i thought this was a budget video i thought this was a cheap gun video blah 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 you got suppressors and crap on there i get that so we're kind of just going to be talking about the gun itself not so much a lot of the accessories so pop my suppressor off here my yankee hill resonator is what this guy is so man that muzzle device is dirty Look at a cheap AR-15, right? This is one of the first AR-15s I ever put together. Uh, it was a cheap build at the time just because I didn't have a whole lot of money and I want to get into an AR-15. So, drop the mic real quick. I've got some money into this aftermarket uh, as far as some things I've upgraded over time. We'll kind of just talk about the base gun. So generally on, with companies like uh, Aero Precision or like PSA for a great example, you can generally get a lower parts kit and a rifle very, I mean, in, in a rifle or pistol configuration very similar to this for under 400 bucks. Uh, sometimes they got daily deals or, or things like that, or you'll find the right time, the right deal, the right sale. Just watched a video the other day, a guy um, you know, bought some $30 lower and a $240 parts kit, under 300 bucks, probably about $300 by the time you pay the transfer fees and get all the paperwork done. He has one of these. So this gun in particular, uh, when, it was, when it was brand new um, and you know, freshly put together was I think I had about $300 into it whenever I first built it up. Then uh, I've upgraded things over time, which is a nice thing about the AR-15 is that you can upgrade stuff over time as money comes. You kind of learn more about it and learn what you want to fix about it. I do advocate though, that if you are going to buy once, cry once, you just do that. If you want to get into the platform though and learn what you like or don't like about it, that is a nice thing is that you can upgrade stuff over time. So uh, the SIG Romeo 5 is an inexpensive red dot. These things are generally around uh, between one to 125. Sometimes they go on sale, but generally on average, you can find them like that on palmetto you can usually get like sometimes uh this and like 10 mags for like a dirt cheap um for my light options like everything on here is kind of designed as a budget rifle right so these are uh these are the iron sights for my daniel defense uh after i swapped sights out on those so these are just uh recycled from a different gun but for my light mount it's just a cheap mag pull mount that comes up and over a cantilever mount with a streamlight put into it. No, you just a push button on the back, no pressure pads, nothing like that. I can come up and push the button if I need to. A Vickers sling, you don't have to go that fancy. You can get cheap if you want. A Magpul for, angle foregrip and a 45 degree safety lever. So something like this, very attainable, very easy to get to, especially nowadays. And as far as quality goes, as long as you're getting good stuff, um, you know, Grantham just had a video out about a 6,000 round test for the PSA. Now, say what you want, one way or the other, everyone's got feelings about PSA. If you're a newer shooter, if you're getting into this, and you wanna have an AR-15, you don't have a ton of money. Again, we saw how well it performed. It performed fairly decently, you know, at, at 4,000 rounds, it was doing really well. 5,000 rounds started to have some issues. 6,000 rounds is where it kind of fell apart, right? But that being said, if you're strapped for cash and that's why you're getting a cheap gun, the odds of you putting 6,000 rounds through your rifle in any amount of time nearby, to any amount of time soon, probably pretty low. So for the average person, you're probably gonna be okay going off with that. The average person, you know, usually shoots maybe 100, 200 rounds every time they go out, once every so often. Um, if you're really heavy on the range, you'll wanna upgrade some of that stuff. But for the average shooter, that's gonna be fine. So we're gonna fight, we're gonna break from here, do some range stuff, and uh, see you in a bit.
All right, so the muzzle brake on here, I generally have covered with the suppressor, but since the suppressor is not part necessarily of the cheap budget part of this, we will put it on here in a minute to save my cameraman's ears. Uh, but I'm gonna show you kind of uh, why I don't, I'm not a huge fan of having muzzle brakes like this on the end, because when you fire it, you tend to lose friends because it's real loud, real concussive, and nobody likes you. Hey, Brandon, how'd that sound right now? Is a phone ringing? Save my tinnitus. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put the suppressor on here to save his hearing. Also, if we're talking about budget, if you are looking for a budget suppressor, I highly recommend Yankee Hill. Uh, this Yankee Hill resonator, I think I got it for like 500-ish bucks. Like uh, definitely under 600 for sure. I think it was out the door for like seven maybe with the, uh, with the tax stamp. Also, which I don't know if it's consistent, but I've been seeing those like the, currently as of this video, I've been seeing people get like two day returns on their NFA stuff. So if you're, you're gonna get a suppressor, now's the time. So again, nice cheap red dot, iron sights, optic, everything you need, nothing you don't. Look at that. So one thing to make note of. So one thing to make note of. <laughs> is that when you are shooting suppress, it is going to be gassy, uh, especially on a cheaper gun without having proper mitigation. I happen to have a bootleg um, bootleg bolt in here, which has a, ga a gas cutoff. You can adjust the gas settings on the bolt uh, to see how much gas you capture, even though you can see on that video, still pretty gassy. So when you're going cheap, you're gonna have issues like that. Um, the more money you spend, the more ways you can mitigate it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, uh, kind of breaking down some budget options for you. Hopefully kind of cleared some things up and maybe you guys can find some guns that are still affordable. Check out your local pawn shops, your local gun stores, see what's there. You never know. Sometimes you get lucky. Have a good one.